What is two times three times four? And let's contrast that with two times three times four. Okay, don't panic. Two times three, that's good old fashioned six. Multiply that by four, you get 24. But what if I wanna go at this from the reverse angle, i.e. three times four? Let's do that part first. Well, that's gonna give us 12. Okay, and then we double that, we still get 24. Hey, hey, it's the same no matter what you do. We call this associativity. It means you can do a pair of multiplications first, however which way you want to. That's basically what it boils down to. This works for a multiplication. Don't jump to conclusions here about addition, subtraction, and division. Let's look at minus two times two times three. And then we'll look at minus two times two times three. Okay, minus two times two. Uh, that's good old minus four. Don't let that minus sign scare you. Multiply that by three, you get minus 12 or negative 12. Likewise, if we do two times three first, that's six. And then we multiply that by negative two, we get minus 12. Okay, so we got the same answer either way. That's the associative property of multiplication. We can pair up the two and the three first or the minus two and the two first. It doesn't matter. Are you ready for one more? Uh, let's do one more. How about five times five times one? And let's compare that to five times five uh, times one. Well, five times one, good old five. Multiply that by five, you get 25. Versus if you do five times five first, well, that's 25, and then you multiply that by one. Oh, that's silly. That's just still 25. It's the associative property of multiplication. This is one of those background skills that we take for granted. It's really important, but not a whole lot of excitement is going on, really. So, to be fair, I still need to give it a good four out of five avocados in terms of how useful this skill is. Are you ready for a hard one? Three times zero times two versus three times zero times two. Okay, three times zero, well, three of nothing is still nothing. And then you multiply that by two. When you double nothing, you still have nothing. Can you see where this is headed? Because zero times two, oh, that's zero. And when you triple it, you still have zero. So again, the associative property multiplication wins. Multiplication is associative, but what about division? Nope. Buckle up, this is fast. Two divided by eight, that's one quarter. When you divide by one quarter, you're really multiplying by four. 16 by four, 64. Park that, let's contrast that with 16 divided by two, which is good old eight. Eight divided by eight is one. 64 and one are not the same. What about addition? Yes. For example, two plus three plus four. Well, two plus three is five. And when you add four, you get nine. Now let's look at it from the other angle. Three plus four, seven. And when you add two to that, yep, Bob's your uncle, you still get nine. Now that in and of itself doesn't prove associativity, but it does illustrate that addition is associative. What about subtraction? No. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of why it doesn't work for subtraction. But I also want you to come up with an example different from mine, illustrating why it doesn't work. And if you just get stuck or you're lost in the sauce, that's all the more reason for you to join the Greater Gators class, which is happening at the end of this video, like right now. All right, this is a little bit advanced, so fast forward or just ignore me if you need to. Haha, <laughs> okay. If you want to 